Just so you know, I have the power. Hello, friends. I am He-Man, and I want you to read along as we listen to the adventures of the Masters of the Universe. Get ready for a lot of fun and excitement. Yeah. Sitting around with time to kill. You are now watching Music the Lifebloods Final Thursday. Hey guys, this is Dustin from Music the Lifeblood. Welcome to Vinyl Thursday. So, in case you guys didn't know, I am a huge fan of Masters of the Universe. Love it. Can't get enough of it. And I even dabble in some toy collecting. I dabble. Just a little bit. Here and there. Nothing crazy. Oh my god, I love Trapjaw! Trapjaw! Anyway, I was born in 1979, so that makes me a child of the 80s. Masters of the Universe hit me in that sweet spot. It affected the art I would be drawn towards throughout my life, and eventually the music I would come to obsess over. And you can't tell me Masters of the Universe isn't metal as all get out. Wizards and castles and swords and axes and blue people with... Skull faces and tiger things that are green and purple panthers. It's like a Dio album come to life. It's, it's incredible. I love it. Anyway, so why are we talking about toys <laughs> on Vinyl Thursday? Well, here's the thing. Masters of the Universe has vinyl. Oh my God. So exciting. So, let's talk about the power of Point Dread and danger at Castle Grayskull. Hidden deep within his mountain lair, Skeletor grins his deadly grin. His newest plot cannot fail. He has planned for everything. Everything, that is, except the power of Point Dread. Behold, Beast Man! Soon I will be able to enter Castle Grayskull freely and learn its many secrets. But, Master, what about He-Man? He is always there to guard the castle. So most folks are familiar with the Filmation cartoon series of Masters of the Universe that ran from 1983 to 1985 and via some totally sweet meme videos on the interwebs. But we're talking about an illustrated read-along book that was released somewhere in the vicinity of 1982-1983. Sorry, I can't get a pinpointed actual release date for this thing because I've seen a couple different ones and I don't want to throw out a date and it be wrong. So there's that. But a bunch of these read-along stories were released between Mattel and another company called Kid Stuff, with Kid Stuff releasing the majority of them, at least terrestrially here in the United States. Back in the mountains, Skeletor howls with glee. Ha <laughs> ha! My plan is working perfectly! Now for part two of my plot. Ah, there's what I seek. A common anthill. But not so common once my energy blade does its work. Behold! Master, those tiny ants are turning into gigantic monsters. Yes, Beast Man. And under my spell, they are now headed for the kingdom of Eternia. The genius of these books is the combination of vibrant, dynamic artwork being combined with equally as enthralling audio to make these stories jump to life right there in your bedroom with you as a child. Now, a little bit about me. I'm epileptic. I haven't had a seizure in a very long time, but as a child, I had them too numerous to even count. 
And there was the ever present fear that if Dustin has a seizure, he might go down, crack his head on the pavement and we've got a bigger issue at that point. So I was limited on a lot of the stuff that I could do as a child. So being able to sit in my room and focus on this amazing, amazing story to sit there and read along with it over and over and over again, that book combined with a cassette tape, or in my case, a seven inch 45 RPM piece of vinyl. It's, it's too amazing to articulate as far as what it did for me as a child and how it still captures me as an adult. In moments, Eternia's new protector is at the North Wall. Back, foul demon! You are no match for He-Man! This is another of Skeletor's nightmarish tricks. Look, He-Man, they're retreating into the foothills. I'm going after them. You stay here, man-at-arms, in case there's another attack. Why, it's Sodak, the cosmic enforcer. Greetings, He-Man. I am here to right a great wrong. Follow me. Now, as an adult, as you get older, it's sometimes difficult to put yourself back into the place that you were as a child and sort of imagine how you interpreted the world around you, how you just sort of saw the world at large, how you understood it. But this story, this book was pivotal in my ability to engage my imagination as a child. And I still have flashes of it just randomly pop into my head. You know, when I started prepping for this episode, went back and, you know, started listening to the, the 45 again and just paying as close attention to it as I could. And it's still difficult for me to objectively separate that from how much it means to me as an adult, which came by the way of me aging from a child. So it's fascinating, fascinating for me to have, you know, went down this rabbit hole for this episode. It's just, it's amazing to me how crucial this little book and this tiny little record was in my development. And like I said, the ability for me to engage my imagination. Here is your answer, He-Man. Behold, Point Dread. It was created by the same scientists who built Castle Greyskull ages ago before the Great War. Point Dread moves through both time and space, so you can go anywhere in Eternia in an instant. Just fly the Talon Fighter above it to any place you want to go. The scales of destiny are once again balanced. Farewell, He-Man. Something to keep in mind with Masters of the Universe as well is that they did things kind of backwards. It started as a toy line. Then they moved into the mini comics, then the regular comics, the books, and then eventually they hit the Filmation cartoon series. So if you got in at the Filmation series, things felt a little weird when you would go back and read the mini comics or the books or the read alongs, that stuff, because it seemed like things were out of order and slightly off because prior to the filmation series, the brand was still getting sussed out. They were figuring out the origins of characters and just the, the whole mythos, everything about it. Good example would be when you listen to the power of Point Dread and Danger at Castle Grayskull, it's obvious that the voice actors playing the characters are not the same as the ones that were featured in the Filmation series. And for me, it might be nostalgia, it might be how much this thing means to me, but I prefer these voice actors to what would eventually come in the Filmation series, Skeletor especially. I just think there's just the slightest element of black metal in Skeletor's voice actor, whoever it was, whoever played his role. Just fascinating to me. And I know I'm saying that as a, you know, 40 something year old man that Skeletor sounds like a black metal singer. You know, it's just kind of ridiculous in that regard. But like I said, I really do prefer the voices on this as opposed to what would come in the filmation series. Triclops! Use your gamma vision to look around this corner! What do you see? He 
Man and Man at Arms are standing in the Watchtower, Master. Excellent! Now it's Teela's turn to help me. Go forward, my dear, and call He-Man! Now, there's only two stories. They're not that long. Comic book length. They could fit both of them on two sides of a 7-inch 45 RPM. So it's not like you're sitting down to read Paradise Lost or anything like that. But between the two, as far as the visual melding with the audio production, the voice production specifically, to me, Danger at Castle Grayskull is the standout between the two. Below ground in the dungeon. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? The mighty He-Man locked up in a dingy cell. Quiet, fool. Ah! My, my, is that the best the great He-Man can do? Just throw water? <laughs> Don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. Just for that, I'm going to stay and keep you company. Say, did I ever tell you about the time I fought off 16 giant spiders? Now, we're going to take a look at my copy here in a few, but before we do that, let's check out some noteworthy stuff surrounding the power of Point Dread and danger at Castle Grayskull. <laughs> Okay, guys, I put together a ton of stuff for us to look at. Lots and lots of artwork. I thought this would be really fun for you guys because some of this artwork is going to strike the same chord that maybe some of the Derek Riggs Iron Maiden album covers would or Ed Repka. Ed did some of the Megadeth album covers. So really, really fun, in my opinion, especially if you're a uber metalhead the way that I am. But uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, this is going to be a lot of fun. So just a couple things worth going over. Uh, if you're into this kind of stuff, there's a great website called He-Man.org. It is so informative. <laughs> it's incredible, absolutely incredible. So if it's, you know, you want to dive into the art of He-Man collecting, that sort of thing, this is a great, great resource. Absolutely incredible. And then there's another one called Vaults of Grayskull. This one's just as thorough, a little bit different as far as the layout goes. It reminds me of like some old school internet stuff, like, you know, old, <laughs> old web page layouts, that sort of thing. But still just as good of a resource or just as great of a resource is that i don't know is that a proper sentence i don't know but this thing's amazing too so both of them go check them out and then worth mentioning too um i watch a lot of shows on youtube you know people that do the kind of stuff that i do here on vinyl thursday and specifically pertaining to masters of the universe there's a dude named pixel dan and he focuses primarily on toy collecting but he has done an exhaustive amount of videos as far as the masters of the universe toys go and i'll tell you right now obviously dan's doing something way different than what i am uh he's creating stuff that is it, it appears to be 100 percent kid friendly even though he's talking about adult collectibles and things like that he doesn't he runs it he runs a clean show and he's always so enthusiastic so it's uh it's really fun to watch him he's one of those guys where i could turn you know turn an episode on and just watch four or five six of them right in a row and i would be entertained the entire time so all right there's that so lots of things to go over. Like I say, this first one is I thought it would be fun to look at some of the original mini comics that came along with the toy line as they were being released. So when you would buy a He-Man figure or a Skeletor figure, you would get a little mini comic behind the figure. If you guys go look at look up some of the, the old school packaging as far as Masters of the Universe and you can see maybe some figures that are on card. Uh, it's usually a blister package, uh, clear pla acrylic plastic, you know, covering over the figure and behind the figure are these mini comics and these mini comics are great. This is as far as I know the first one. So just keep in mind, guys, I am not a masters of the universe expert the way I am with some bands, you know, uh, you know, I have some knowledge on kiss. I have some knowledge on the misfits. Sam Hain, Danzig, that sort of thing. But when it comes to Masters of the Universe, I am not even going to try 
to be an expert. But as far as I know, I think this is the cover of the first mini comic that came with that first wave of figures. And again here, God, look at the art. Just absolutely incredible. Amazing, amazing looking art. You know, and so I'm not going to lie. Some of the proportions are a little weird, um, but I'm okay with it. I'm I'm totally okay with it. But that's He-Man and the Power Sword. And then up next is King of Castle Grayskull. Great looking, great looking cover there. Old school, old school in the sense that it's real thick pencil lining. You know, I'm assuming they did these like normal comic books, pencil it, and then they ink it, and then they cover it or color it. Sorry. And that one was done by, uh, that's Alfredo Acala as well. Um, he's the guy that drew, you know, Power of Point Dread and Danger at Castle Grayskull as well. So dude's got skills. Uh, the one thing I would say to me, this looks like he may have drawn it smaller and this got blown up uh, in size. That could be why some of the, the lining is so bold. That might be it. You know, if, if you think about if, you know, when you, if an original drawing was done on, say, an 11 by 17 and then you blow it up to like 24 by 36, you're going to lose some of the resolution. So I kind of wonder about some of these illustrations surrounding Masters of the Universe, but still absolutely amazing nonetheless and then here's the next one this one's the vengeance of skeletor skeletor i think again alfredo acala on this one too same sort of illustration motif now as far as this actual image goes again guys i'm not an expert on masters of the universe but i found it interesting you can see the little uh, right there beside the Vengeance of Skeletor at the top it says Replica. Don't don't know what's going on with that. Not not sure what's up with that. Could be, I don't know, maybe this is a counterfeit scan of something. But, I mean, you get the gist of it anyway. Still super cool looking. And then I think the next one's got Merman on it. Yep. Yeah, this is Battle in the Clouds. Again, Alfredo Acala knocking it out of the park. You guys, if you guys don't know, it it occasionally came up on the Music the Lightblood podcast um, every now and then between uh, Big Jake and I. Uh, but I've always been fascinated with sea creatures, um, especially you know the mythos surrounding sea monsters. You know, when I was a kid, I got interested in the Loch Ness monster, Champ from Lake Champlain, Ogopogo. Uh, all those. So I've always had a uh, sort of casual interest in scary things that come from the deep and merman specifically always sort of scratched that itch with me when I was a kid. So I'm wondering if maybe my fascination with merman caused me to be sort of casually interested in cryptozoology when I was, when I was young and into my adulthood too. You know, I still, I watch documentaries and if I see an article, I read it. So you guys are learning all kinds of stuff about me today. This is this has been fun. And here I believe this is the back of some of those mini comics. I believe. <laughs> so again, sorry guys, I'm not a not an expert, but uh I mean just look at the art. It's so cool, so bold. Um you know, there's detail in there, but it's not you know, you're not looking at like a Boris Vallejo painting or anything, but it's still, there's just something so dang compelling about the Masters of the Universe art for me. Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then here's, okay, cool. So these are some of the golden books. Um, uh, I think they called them, yeah, you see the little thing up there in the corner, Super Adventure. That's the... I guess the branding that they used for some of this masters of the universe stuff. I'm sure they had other books. There was, um, when I was a kid, there were these, uh, read along books that came with a seven inch in them as well for the gremlins. And they're, to me, they're real similar to this. Now that could have been a golden book. I don't know. I didn't bother to look that up, but who knows? Um, but either way, they still kind of in the, the same genre of stuff, but just look at that artwork. Absolutely incredible. 
You got Clawful back there. He's the lobster dude. There's Evil Lynn, Beast Man. Looks like Whiplash back there. Skeletor, Tila, He-Man, obviously. Man of Arms. Fisto down there in the lower right corner. And I think that's Moss Man beside him. It's hard to tell. Looks like Moss Man. But really, really dynamic piece of artwork. Power from the sky. Whoa! It's absolutely incredible. And then here's this. I thought this one was really interesting. This is the Sunbird Legacy. Um, this was a, a hard a hardback. Um, you know, we're not talking like a hardback novel. You know, there's again here. It's like a it's like a comic book on steroids. You know, that sort of thing. But just look at that cover art. Good lord. You know, I can't. I don't know if I've mentioned it before in any episodes in the past. I'm pretty sure I have. Maybe when we were doing a, an album review, I was doing an album review, and I opened up a gatefold for an album, and I mentioned my brother being an illustrator. And you know, I really thought about it surrounding this episode. Um, that's what my brother does for a living. He's a he's a graphic artist. Um, and he kills it. He's absolutely amazing. And he draws in a way that is uh, in the vein of a good, of a guy named Bernie Wrightson. He did this uh, illustrated version of Frankenstein. And it is so jaw-droppingly astounding as far as his illustration ability, his, his, his nuance as far as communicating emotion and his illustrations and things like that. So as my brother was going to college and he was fine tuning his illustration skills, there was a lot of really great books, illustrations around the house before my brother moved out and, you know, left on his own. He's seven years older than me. So he had moved out and I became a teenager and I was there until I moved out. And the, the thing I always think about is how drawn to the Dragonlance artwork my brother was when I was young. And he still is. I remember flipping through these these illustrated books that he had and specifically seeing, uh, they're called the Draconians. They're a race of anthropomorphized dragons, I guess. That's the best way to describe it. And I remember this this illustration of these these draconians sort of standing at the edge of i think it was maybe at the edge of of small forest or something and i remember snow in it i haven't looked at the illustration for many 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 years but it looked like they were plotting and scheming you know at the edge of the woods on what their next move is going to be and i always i always think of that drawing when i when i see these masters of the universe illustrations it elicits the same response for me. And this one, the Sunbird Legacy, this hardback, whew, man, look at that thing. Just look at how much gradient this, the, the, this illustration has as far as the, the dynamics of it. You know, you got Man at Arms and Beast Man going at it in the background. Man at Arms trying to keep Beast Man away from He Man and Skeletor. You know, Beast Man's probably coming to to defend Skeletor, and you know, Skeletor's obviously in a position of uh, He Man's obviously got the upper hand on him. You know, by the positioning of Skeletor, you can see that he's got Skeletor balancing on his rear foot. His, you know, the uh, what do you, the ball of your feet? Is that your heel? I don't know what it is, but anyway, he man's got the advantage in this, in this illustration. And then look at what's going on in the background there. You got, uh, Tila. It looks like she's in the sky. Was that the sky Raider? I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but you know, blasting somebody off the top of castle grace call, you know, I'm guessing it, it's looking like Oh, Wind Raider. I think that's what it is. Wind Raider. Sorry, I blanked on it, guys. Uh, blasting somebody off the top of Grayskull. And if Tila's shooting at Castle Grayskull, that probably means Skeletor and Beastman had gotten into it. Or they're in the middle of, you know, trying to take over Castle Grayskull. That's sort of the reoccurring theme when it comes to the uh, the relationship between <laughs> Skeletor and Humanity. You know, 
it's uh it's not a healthy one for sure <laughs> uh okay what's next let's see what we got here oh okay cool so um i think i mentioned it uh i think i mentioned it at the beginning of the show if i didn't um i did a lot of takes for this episode i was trying to get stuff you know really really right i guess but here's uh the golden books and i have some of these uh, not all of them but i have some of them so again here is super adventure uh, a golden book this i don't believe this is one of the read-along ones because there's a read-along version of the sword of skeletor and there's a non-read-along version of it so I think don't again don't quote me on that. All I know is that the one I have is that, the one that's pictured. So great dynamic illustration, obviously. Looks absolutely killer. And then here's the thief of Castle Grayskull. There's Stratos trying to catch He Man before he plummets to the ground. This one's great. I think this is Caverns of Fear. Yep, this is Caverns of Fear. It's an awesome illustration of Trap Jaw back there on the left. You know, he's got that robot arm and that metal jaw. You know, oh God, look at that. That's amazing. Just, you know, being a kid, imagine what this, you know, would elicit the the sort of excitement, the the emotion that this would draw out of a a kid, you know, I can remember, I can remember I'm feeling it right now as I'm looking at him. Just incredible. That's one of my favorite stories too. It's awesome. God, amazing. Here's a good one. This one's super, super, a lot of action going on in this one, the trap. He, man, it looks like he broke off the door and he's shoving Skeletor through the archway. Look at Skeletor's face. Just look at the detail on that. And Beastman too. Beastman's face back there. Look at He Man's hair sort of moving in the mo in the motion of it. Just astoundingly great. And there's yeah, Mask of Evil. This one's great. I got I bought this not too long ago. Found it on eBay for super cheap. Great looking. Again, Merman over here. I love Merman. I love spooky things that come out of the water. I was thinking about that the other day. Time Trouble. Again here, a lot of action. A lot of movement happening. Skeletor in the background. And the Rock Warriors. Oh, this one's great. Again here, action. Look at this horde of rock people just coming after He-Man. You know, Skeletor gazing on in the background, delighted in the awful situation that he's probably putting He-Man in. Sorry about the background noise, guys. It's the middle of the day, and I got somebody hot riding a motorcycle up and down the street. Uh, Secret of the Dragon's Egg, this one here. Ah, oh, man, that's amazing. So the, the neat thing about this, so obviously, um, you know, if you're, if you're in the Masters of the Universe, maybe you like Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. And that dragon back here, what's that dragon remind you of? Ding, 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 ding. The Ring Wraiths, the Nazgul, the dragons that they rode. Forget what the name of them are. Sorry, I'm not up to up to snuff on my Lord of the Rings trivia, but yeah, look at that thing. Skeletor parting the flames with his with his staff, his uh, ram staff, goat. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. A lot of action again. All right, so a couple more here. Let's see this one. What we got? Oh, Meteor Monsters. Yeah, this one's awesome too. So I think that's Cobra Khan in the background. I think that's his name. I love the green on this one. Just looks great. You could see that being like a... Like an Angel Witch cover, an album cover. You know, something just incredible. 
Then the magic mirrors. There's Ram Man, Fisto, He Man trapped in the mirror. We got Skeletor and Evil Lynn right there at the front. Same illustrator, obviously, Norum. Dude is on par with Boris Vallejo and Frank Frazetta, in my opinion. You know, Valle Boris Vallejo has that really polished style. Frank Frazetta's tends to be a bit more rough and tumble, but I sometimes I sometimes wonder if I, I probably gravitate more towards Frank Frazetta's style because of this Masters of the Universe style of illustration. The Alfred Acala, obviously the guy that did these Norum, his his method of illustrating feels a bit more rough and sort of shabby chic. So Frazetta, if you look at all those old Conan album or comic book covers, I was gonna say album covers. Those Conan um, uh, comic covers, things like that. You know, Frank Frazetta did a lot with Conan. Just, dude is absolutely amazing. And here's the last one I grabbed. I thought this one was great. A Hero Need, you know, Orko. Ah, Orko's in danger. You know, He-Man and Battle Cat coming to the rescue. The orange sort of yellow hue that that has. Really, really neat. So there's those. And then as far as these read-along ones, be it a 7-inch 45 or a cassette tape, like I said, there's a bunch of these. Bunch, 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 bunch of these. So the Power of the Evil Horde, um, I think this one was a read-along. Um, I came across it twice. Uh, looks, you know, different anime, different style on that one. Um, I don't know if I like that as much as some of the other ones we were just looking at, but still looks great. And then, so here's a good look at the one uh, we're going to look at here in a minute. This is the PowerPoint Dread and Danger at Castle Grayskull, obviously. So this is the copy that I have. This is this is mine. This is the one I got. This one's amazing, but worth noting, the idea for this story existed prior to to that version there was a power of point dread released prior to that here's the cover of it you know it feels it feels similar you know almost same but obviously the one we're going to look at there's a bit more detailing in it this feels more like old school maybe 70s and early 80s comic book art but this story this version of the story is so much more rough and tumble than the one we're going to look at here in a minute. Here's the first page. You know, Skeletor is, looks like he's meditating. Perhaps I still cannot breach the defenses of Castle Grey Skull. <laughs> uh, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's cool. But like I said, this story is way more rough and tumble than the one we're going to look at. So there's a Talon fighter. You know, they're, they're doing that. You know, developing the connection to Castle Grey Skull. Skeletor is going to use it for bad stuff, you know, and then just hijinks and shenanigans ensue. Just, you know, still as dynamic of artwork, but done, like I said, in that sort of 70s, 80s Marvel and DC comic book style. Maybe a little bit of 60s there, too. I think everybody, everybody thinks of Bob Kane and Bill Finger as far as you know, when it comes to DC, and I'm a huge DC fan. Aquaman and Nightwing, those are my guys. And then this was another uh, read-along. Here's a kid stuff one. I've came across this online on a couple of occasions. Uh, I think I saw it on eBay not too long ago. Um, but the neat thing, you can see the sort of tag down there at the bottom. See the pictures, hear the stories, read the book. Boom, Castle Grayskull. That one's cool looking. And then here's a copy of the cassette that came with that. Yellow, bright canary yellow, like banana yellow with that reddish orange printing on it. It just, yikes, man, that thing is, <laughs> that thing is bright. So I wanted to show you guys some of these cassettes since we're going to be looking at 45 here in a minute. Uh, here's another one. This is Battle Under Snake Mountain. 
There's a couple of the Snake Man. That looks like, I think that's Tongue Lasher on the, on the ride over there. Again, this is a kid's stuff one. They did a lot of these, tons and tons of them. And then the next one, obviously this one has a cassette too. That's, you know, it'd be cool to see a band use that right now. I could see, you know, like some awesome, awesome sort of trad metal band using that sort of yellow theme. And then here's the read-along version of Caverns of Fear. Uh, I don't have this one. I have just the regular one. And I noticed there's a little bit of a size difference between these read-along ones versus versus the the regular version, whatever. I'll pull one out here in a minute when I uh, when we take a look at my copy of uh, Power of Point Dread. But you can see the size difference. It's, I don't know, maybe scaled down. If I had to guess, maybe 20%, maybe 15, 20% size difference, but still great nonetheless. And then we got a black cassette for this one. So I thought, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting. I don't know when clear cassettes came about. I don't know when that started happening, but it's interesting that that one's black and they went with yellow with the other ones. And then... Here's The Thief of Castle Grayskull. Looked at that other one again. Kid stuff right here. And then there goes that motorcycle again. I don't know if you guys can hear it. And then this one was cool. White. White cassette with red printing on it. You know, if you're into collecting cassettes, it's always cool to come across a, a colored one. These are neat. You know, there might, there might be some sort of an advantage to uh, maybe printing uh color wise as far as these cassettes to to maybe you know at the factory that they would have been assembled maybe colored ones maybe they use the colored ones specifically for children's books and kids related stuff there might be something to that i have to dig some digging on it or do some digging on it dig some digging oh all right and there's yeah that's all of them so let's take one more look at this original Power of Point Dread versus the regular version, I guess, or the one I'm going to open up here in a few so you guys can take a look at it. You can you know, just sort of check out the difference between the two of them. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Like I said, just a little more detail in the read-along one. But this original one, like I said, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I get well comparatively to uh just he-man and the masters of the universe overall um you know we're not we're not talking about like the opening scene of you know the normandy scene of saving private ryan we're not talking about that kind of stuff but this uh the difference between the two it's because i read through this original one and whew, big difference but cool little uh, A-B comparison there. All right. Let's check this thing out. Okay, guys, before we open up my copy of The Power of Point Dread, Danger at Castle Grayskull, just worth mentioning, this thing is amazing. This is the art of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Can't remember when this came out. It's been within like the last five or six years, I think. But uh, great book. Uh, Dark Horse Comics released it. If you're a Dark Horse fan, uh, it's by a dude or dudes. Well, there's two of them, Tim and Steve Seeley. Maybe those are brothers. I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is an awesome resource if you're super into Masters of the Universe artwork. Um, just tons and tons of stuff in here. They go through kind of the, the genesis of how everything began. Lots of awesome sketches and pieces of artwork as far as leading into what would eventually become the line of toys that we all knew. You know, it's a great shot of a bunch of the figures. Totally cool. There's Scaraglow. He's uber hard to find now, but yeah, really, really great stuff, this thing. Definitely worth it. I I remember I got it on sale. I just can't remember how much it was. It was well under 
fifty dollars. I remember that could be cheaper. Who knows? But there's some really really good stuff in here. Just give you a quick little flip through so you guys can see it. All kinds of stuff. Lots of art from the mini comics, the movie. Sort of art drawing mock-ups of random stuff. There's quite a bit in here about the 2000X reboot. I think that was 2002 when they rebooted the series. And, you know, really, really good stuff. But anyway, check this thing out. If you guys, if you find it, it's uh, definitely worth the buy. All right. So. Ba -da 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 -da. There we go. The power of point dread and danger at Castle Grayskull. I know I wanted to um, uh, grab another for like size comparison. So real quick, just so you can see size wise. Here's the read along for Caverns of Fear. There's the, the record in there. And then I know I mentioned this earlier. There's the Super Adventure Golden Book version of it. So like I said, size difference, obviously. My guess is just from a packaging standpoint to be able to get the the 45 RPM 7 inch in there to fit that sort of thing. So either way, still, I mean, killer artwork in these are, are great. You know, this one's awesome. He-Man's riding Battle Cat through the Eternia countryside. And here's something going on in this well, in this cave down there. And yeah, and then Merman. Ah, Merman's on the attack. So anyway, like I mentioned earlier, there's just a ton of these. And they're great. Absolutely love them. Sounded like Tony the Tiger there for a minute. Okay. Here's my copy. Sadly, this isn't the one I had when I was a kid. I wish I still had it, but not going to happen. So that Alfredo Acala artwork, just killer, killer on here. Amazing. Two stories with record. It's awesome. And there's a back cover. So like I said, uh, Masters of the Universe did things sort of backwards. They started as a toy line. And then the comics books, and then eventually the cartoon series would come after that. And <laughs> the, the, the entire line, as far as advertising and things like that, they're just pushing the hell out of action figures. So everything on the back here is, you know, they, that's illustrations of the action figures, which really, really, really neat looking. It's Triclops, Merman, Trap Jaws, Killtor Beast Man. I'm a big fan of the baddies. But anyway, I don't want to go through the whole book, but just incredible. I love this illustration of He Man <laughs> sitting there by a stump with his turntable, listening to his own book, which I think is amazing. You know, there's a big, there's a big splash page. For the opening of it. Beast Man and Skeletor checking out what's going on around Castle Grayskull. And I'll do a quick flip through so you guys can see stuff. But man oh man did this thing mean so much to me as a kid. Oh here's a great example. Yeah this is King Randor. Look how much different he looks in the book versus what he became in uh, in the cartoon right there. Perfect example. You know, you find out King Randor is, you know, he ends up being uh, He-Man's dad, I believe, right? I think that's what it is. Spoiler. But, yeah. Just amazing. Just amazing. This scene right here, I remember as a kid so vividly. I remember specifically the look on that guard's face, you know, yelling that sound the alarm, giant monsters are attacking. Just, I know I'm geeking out about this. You guys can hear Haggis. She's doing something in the other room. Zodak shows up. 
and then bam, I think I missed a couple pages. Yeah, I did. There's the power fighter. There you go. So all very, very cool. And then here's Danger at Castle Grace Call. This is the one I like uh, between the two. The one I, I really like just a little bit more than the other. Still cool. Talking about the attack track, and it's kind of got a mind of its own. And, and then there's Zor. I think that's this is prior to them making Zor the princess uh, the princesses was it princess the the sorceress no the sorceress the sorceress of castle grace call her and zor are you know it's kind of like dracula turning into a bat uh, but that's prior to that i believe before they established that so like i said some of the the canon as far as the canon history for things it's kind of wonky in some of this earlier stuff prior to the filmation cartoon so it makes it super weird. You know, here's one of my favorite scenes, you know, here with He-Man throws a bucket of water on Trapjaw, and that sort of eventually incapacitates Trapjaw. He can't uh can't move his mouth because it rusted shut. That's how He-Man gets out. There's a big old battle. Then there you go. There's that. So Here's the back. The neat thing about this booklet is that it's it acts as its own sleeve for the 45, which cool. I'm guessing that had something to do with the decision as far as the size of the book. I'm guessing that's why they didn't go with, you know, you need to make sure that, you know, if you're putting that, sorry, we'll get this dust off that if you're going to put, you know, 45 in there, you want it to be secure. It's not going to roll around, that sort of thing. So I sometimes wonder if that was the, the motivator for the change in size of the actual book. Sorry, I'm getting this dust off. Drives me nuts. Okay, there you go. Cool looking. That label's neat too. Again, here the illustrations are they're du you know duplicating the actual look of the figures themselves. Which again, that's just good marketing. You get the you get the kids used to seeing uh, what the actual toys are going to be like that way. So super cool. And I know I'm pretty sure I mentioned it earlier in the episode as far as the uh, production, the audio production of Danger at Castle Grayskull, I think it's a bit more superior or a bit more superior, superior to um, the PowerPoint Dread, mainly because of the vocal production, because you get, you get a few, I think you get a few more characters in the, the Danger at Castle Grayskull story. Um, Triclops, especially, his voice, really, really neat sounding. You know, got a got a little bit of effects on there that just sound great. So I got to track all these down now. I think that's kind of where I'm at with it. I want every single one of them. So that's going to be a funny rabbit hole to crawl down. But good looking, cool, um, cool, uh. 45. Be neat to have gotten these on colored vinyl too. Imagine how much that would pop as like a red or like a Skeletor blue color. That would look amazing, amazing, amazing. Super cool nonetheless. All right. I thought this was neat too. Um, there's a quick little, uh, little advert about the, the mini comics. Masters of the Universe mini comics, powerful tales of action and adventure. Collect all seven. He Man meets Ram Man, the ordeal of many faces, the menace of Trapjaw, the terror of Triclops, the tale of Tila, the magic stealer, the power of Point Dread. Cool. Check out that shot of Skeletor right there. 
defeated. Ah, oh, man, looks amazing. But that's it, guys. I really just wanted to kind of geek out about this for a little while because I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And don't forget to, if you can get a hold of one of these, it's worth the investment. I love it. I look at it on a regular basis. Just love sort of getting lost in the illustrations. This is awesome. And then, like I mentioned already, you know, there's the Caverns of Fear. Here's that. You know, similar setup. Slightly different. And then all the Super Adventure books. I think I got a... Do I have any more somewhere? I can't remember. But yeah, I went through these as far as the online stuff. But still, these things are great to have. All right, guys. The Power of Point Dread and Danger at Castle Grayskull. All right, guys, that's it for this week's edition of Vinyl Thursday. A little bit different kind of an episode. This was fun, though. I liked it. There's a ton of these read-along books. A lot of them came out with cassettes as well, so I might do another one of these down the road. If I come across one, I think it's going to be totally amazing. So, yeah, yeah, maybe we'll re revisit this at some point. So... There's that. All right. Do the subscribe thing, notification bells, social media, other Music the Light Blood shows, conversations from the pit, back episodes of the Music the Light Blood podcast, blah, 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 blah. All that. So I can't do the one line because it doesn't really work for a toy read along thing. So. Who's your favorite Masters of the Universe villain? How about that? Let us know in the comment section below. So that'll be fun. I'm a big trap jaw guy. It's kind of cliche, but he's awesome. He's got the metal mouth. So that's fun. All right. See you guys next time. Curse you, He-Man! You and all your friends and your weapons and... Look, He-Man. It's attack track. It's firing lasers at Skeletor. <laughs> I think you are right, man at arms. That machine does have a mind of its own. What? There goes Skeletor and his band, many faces. And his spell over me is now broken. That only leaves our jailer trap jaw to deal with. What should we do with our rusted foe? Perhaps you can use him as a dummy for combat practice. Hey, man at arms. <laughs>